Uh, now, before I hand it over to our great speaker, let me introduce her briefly. So for today, we have Arafin, uh, a midwife from Bangladesh. So in 2020, Arafin graduated from Dhaka Nursing College with a diploma in midwifery. The following year, she contributed in Bangladesh Midwifery Society, or BMS, as an intern midwife. Since then, she has been collaborated with Save the Children Bangladesh and participated in a fellowship through RCM and BMS Twinning Project, while also being elected as an executive board member of Bangladesh Midwifery Society. In 2023, she gained the role of midwife supervisor at our RTNI or uh, midwife supervisor research training and management international in Bangladesh, supported by the UNFPA. So, without further ado, Harafin, Harafin, are you there? Uh, I will hand over to the stage to our speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Raisa. Okay, I'm gonna let my microphone and then the time is yours. Okay. Um, so, Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. Um, good evening. Uh, maybe somewhere it's morning or noon or uh, night. So, um, uh, already Raisa uh, introduced me in a very well way. So, uh, myself, Arpan Hati Meem, a middle supervisor from Research Training and Management International and also a young middle leader from Bangladesh. Um, as this is uh, my story, so the presentation is all about my journey, my experience, and the situation I have faced as a young middle leader, and how I overcome those challenges by bringing good uh, changes, or you can say outcomes, uh, uh, from my leadership and work. So, um, so let's start with the journey of um, as a young middle leader or a middle supervisor. So, so back in 2020, I just completed my uh, diploma in middle free course from Dhaka Nursing College. The college is a central, um, a central college of Bangladesh, and uh, um, I also obtained my license as a registered midwife in 2021 following successful completion of my comprehensive exam. So joining Bangladesh Midwifery Society as an intern midwife in 2020 laid the foundation for my career. That was the first uh, first platform to enhance my leadership quality and empowering me to assume leadership roles in um, in the uh, in middle free at just 21 years old. So shortly after the passing my comprehensive exam, I embarked on my first role as a midwife at Save the Children Bangladesh, specializing in humanitarian aid um, and additionally i was honored with a one-year fellowship program through the uh, tropical health and education trust the royal college of midwives and ba the bangladesh midwifery society twinning project in 2021 alongside uh, be uh, being elected as an executive board member of the bangladesh midwifery society so this fellowship uh, not only owned my leadership skills, but also expanded my leadership perspective. Uh, so back in 2023, I seized an opportunity to uh, serve as a midwife supervisor at Research Training and Management International, supported by United Nations Population Fund, and where I applied the insights gained uh, from the fellowship program. My leadership journey has been characterized by invaluable experience and continuous learning opportunities. So can we go to the next slide, Raisa? I so, can uh, see my screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's go to the next uh, topic that is the context of midwifery in Bangladesh. Um, as the ba midwifery profession is very new in Bangladesh, so there is a short background to how it started. So in uh, back in 2010, the Prime Minister of Sheikh Hasina committed uh, uh, to creating 3,000 midwifery role across the Bangladesh to reduce maternal and newborn mortality rates and achieve the sustainable development goals. The first batch of middle free graduates debuted in 2016 with initial placements in um, public services beginning in 2018. 
So currently we have 2,557 midwives serving in public sector and an extra 7,500 uh, 7, positions have been established already. And some midwives also active in a humanitarian and private sectors. So Bangladesh uh, necessitates uh, 25,000 midwives to adequately meet its requirement. So the next slide, please. So here is a short background of the Bangladesh Midwifery Society, obviously where from I have started, the platform all, uh, had given me the opportunity to uh, enhance my leadership capability. So the Bangladesh Midwifery Society, this is a midwifery association, the only one association in Bangladesh. And in one word, this is the voice of midwives. From where I started my journey, the platform which gave me opportunity to dream big encouraged me to be a leader. So the Bangladesh Midwifery Society, um, just to have a stat statistics about the membership, because it's a membership based association and uh, it has 6,167 uh, members included both registered and student midwives. So Bangladesh Midwifery Society is advocating government and non-government stakeholders in various purpose for the development of midwifery in Bangladesh. Through the training project from 2017 to 2022 with the Royal College of Midwives and from 2023 till now, it's International Confederation of Midwives and the project named is Tendening Bangladesh Midwifery Society Project supported by United Nations Populations Fund. So next, uh, the next slide, please. Yeah. So um, let's move to the main topic where I am working. That is the Bhashan Chor. That is one kind of island in uh, in Bangladesh. And uh, um, just to share a statistic, like according to the UN Refugee Agent Agency (UNHCR), that is the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. More than um, 7 lakh 23,000 Rohingyas have fled to Bangladesh from Myanmar since 2000, uh, since 25 August 2017. And the mainland was Cox's Bazar. And since December uh, two, 2020, the Bangladesh government has moved nearly 20,000 Rohingya refugees to Bhash Bhashanchal. And now the Rohingya population is almost 32,572. So um, the government of Bangladesh planned to re reallocate up to one lakh refugees to Bhashanchor under a controversial relocation plan. And uh, um, the story has been started from, uh, uh, from uh, when Myanmar uh, population um, fled uh, to Bangladesh and uh, got, a, uh, got a place in Cox's Bazaar to live and get the, uh, get the living support, the educational support, and also the health support from the Bangladesh government and the North government organization. So the next slide, please. Can we move to the next slide, um, Raisa, please? Yeah, thank you. So uh, here you can see some photos of transportation, and this is the main challenge in, challenge in, uh, in the island that uh, um, the island uh, uh, is is called a jail uh, basically in the middle of the sea that is Bhashanchor, a disaster prone island the only three mode of transport from Bhashanchor is uh, the first picture in, you can see the navy frigate which almost take three to four hours and the second one is the trawler and it take uh, four to five hours and but it's quite risky and uh, the speedboat the third one is that is taking one and a half hours so without these three uh, transportation uh, support, we cannot move from, from the island to the mainland. So here is the some uh, some initial challenges in establishing military later when I came in Bhashanchor as a military supervisor. So um, uh, 
Initially, uh, under my supervision, there are 13 midwives and I'm supervising and mentoring them and they are working uh, in two facilities. That is, one is health post where midwives are providing uh, antenatal care, postnatal care and, and providing family planning services along with syndromic management of uh, um, uh, sexual, um, sexual tract infection and the reproductive tract track infections so and the, another facility is 20 bit government hospital uh, where midwives are providing antenatal care uh, providing normal vaginal delivery and uh, also postnatal care so uh, in the government the main challenge was the government facility and uh, here uh, when i came there was only one labor room available with no separating room from uh, for postnatal and prenatal care and the labor room a room was very small and cramped and the space was very uh, adequate and uh, um, the midwives had to give the services in that one uh, with that one room the second one is uh, the communication with the team as we know that in a health uh, team we have uh, we always have a doctor a nurse a midwife medical assistant but uh, uh, here i found that some communication gap towards the team as uh, um, midwife cannot uh, be a team alone um, uh, without uh, the other healthcare professions so uh, the third one is other healthcare professionals were not similar with the standard operating procedures of of midwives the other healthcare uh, professionals didn't know that what what midwives can do and what is uh, what is not their responsibilities so um, uh, and the fourth one is doubt regarding midwives capability to do, lead the development of a new service as i already mentioned that uh, uh, midwifery uh, profession is very new in bangladesh so it's tough to uh, make the people understand that what is the responsibilities uh, midwives are holding and uh, doing their work in the, in, in the workplace and uh, there as uh, you can found uh, um, uh, maximum midwives with or uh, uh, with just almost eight year experience, and most of the them are very very young. So there is always a doubt um, to the midwife's capability to lead the new uh, new service. So uh, another challenges was that lack of trust in, in in my leadership abilities. As I already mentioned, that I have I started my journey at just twenty one years old, and at twenty four years old, I just become a midwife supervisor of thirteen midwives. So I have I I have to face some challenges according to the um, which uh, uh, introduced the gender equality in midwifery profession. So doubt about midwife's uh, capacity to provide essential maternal and neonatal health care services as, as well. So uh, then the next slide, please. So um, midwives uh, have to work in, in their workplace with the leadership individually. So there is always that uh, always lack of trust on midwives uh, from the healthcare professionals and the, uh, from the community and also from the other st uh, staff who are working in the uh, health facility and uh, ability to strategies for setting up a midwife related care facility that how uh, there is always a uh, question that how midwives are going to um, deal with a pregnant woman uh, or with a with the child, uh, are they really able, uh, uh, capable to uh, to uh, save a true life along with their short experience? And uh, as well, uh, issues with the referral system due to HR gaps um, that is leading uh, um, inability to provide 24 by 7 cesarean sections for the women and the newborn. HR gaps was always there, uh, and the midwife uh, also assigned to roles beyond their scope of practice, like nursing duties. So um, there is a huge difference be between um, uh, between the professions that like uh, nursing, midwifery, and who are nurse midwife together. So there is a huge difference, and midwives are not nurses. So there, there is always the confusion that uh, um, the midwives can do the nurses' challenges as well as well in the in the uh, work facility. So there was some lack of awareness uh, about their uh, scope of practice, guidelines, and competencies with some knowledge gaps among the midwives. So cultural challenges was always there, and uh, as well the geographical challenges due to the areas climate related, as the, I already mentioned that Bhashantwari is a climate vulnerable place. So the next slide, please. Yeah. 
So uh, towards uh, these challenges, I I dis I um uh, proceed some strat strategies to achieve the objective. The first one is advocacy. So um if we as a midwife uh, want to provide quality services and want to ensure our scope of practice, we have to uh, make a advocacy in every situation in uh, to the every uh, chair. So um, we have to uh, advocate the decision makers, as I always did, and the fellow healthcare providers for the expansion of midwife scope of practice because uh, we are working within a team. And uh, um, it's, it's our responsibility to emphasize the teamwork to enhance healthcare access because uh, midwives are uh, dealing with the um, pregnant women and the family of the community and uh, in necessity, they are referring to the doctor. So there will be uh, always a effective communication between the team and it's the need to be ensured the scope of practice and uh, um, uh, people need to know that what what are the media responsibilities uh, so in this uh, in these subjects we need to advocate the people we need to advocate the healthcare professionals that is the way i first choose and uh, this includes uh, securing the necessary stuff such as um, we previously we had lack of hr support like gynecologist and anesthesiologist because without a full team we cannot provide uh, full accelerator services and we cannot ensure 24 by 7 care of cesarean section um, and uh, in bhashantur especially because the transport uh, system is very challenging here if we uh, if we want to refer a critical patient or emergency obstetric, obstetric emergency patient then we need to take at least six to seven hours and two to three hours almost we take for the preparation because we need to inform the residential med medical officer the camp in charge the triple rc and after that we can refer the patient from Bhashancho to the mainland and we also need to communicate to the tertiary level hospital uh, uh, that um, uh, we we are referring to inform by informing that we are referring a patient. So this is the situation in Bhashantar. Uh, so and uh, uh, we had to uh, ensure a team to provide 24 by 7 obstetric um, care. And in this subject, uh, I always advocate the higher position people about the services, challenges of midwives, and uh, and the also the procedures that midwives are going to take. Advocate for the resources and support needed to enable midwives to provide high quality care, um, uh, whether it's about the equipment or training opportunities, as this is the short place and uh, um, maximum time we didn't get the opportunities uh, on training because we have to um, go from the Vashantra to the mainland to, uh, to take um, the uh, necessary training. And um, uh, the continuous training is the midwifery life saving skills training, but uh, but uh, um, without this topic, we have to take some some essential training on the maternal health and newborn health. So sometimes there is lack of the opportunity. So I always get to advocate um, uh, position, uh, position higher position people to give more opportunities to the midwives uh, to provide quality services. The next slide, please. Um, uh, during midwifery, uh, during providing midwifery services, we always face some challenges from the uh, from the field. Like uh, in this regard, I always dedicated to active listening as a uh, as a midwife supervisor to government authorities, like the health service manager, doctors, and the res residential medical officer, and also the fellow midwives. And about the teamwork uh, between the midwives and women and uh, their families, um, because it's 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 a responsibility from a supervisor like uh, how our midwives are providing quality services and uh, and uh, what is the relationship between the midwives and the women and also with the team because uh, i think midwifery is different and here we need to um, build a relationship with the women and their families not only uh, just uh, uh, giving the treatment or uh, or the providing the midwifery services it's always about uh, um, the main fact is to make a, um, a a strong relationship with the women empower the women to take the necessary steps and decisions so i think there is always a, a active part of listening uh, the both side from the healthcare providers and also the women and their families we can't ignore them
so uh, this it allows me to understand the perspective glean insight from the others and create an environment for meaningful collaboration and uh, also ensure the um, and standards to and facilitate the teamwork and also monitor the performance of midwives the how they are providing care to the um, uh, to the uh, women and their families is is the most important thing to monitor and supervise the midwives so the next slide please So through this journey, I always got some support because as an individual midwife supervisor, I can't communicate with the higher position team. We have to always maintain the internal teamwork, and uh, and uh, this is this is very important to to make a strong internal teamwork and communication. Uh, and uh, regard this, I always go, uh, get help from the international midwifery specialist from our UNFPA, and uh, the um, and my organization project manager from RTMI and the coordinator the management team and other in space staff and also the national media coordinators and other media supervisor also so the next slide so here I mentioned uh, two reflections from uh, from the um, the design that I have made and uh, uh, and uh, the procedure I have applied in 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 my leadership uh, work and uh, this is the, the six thinking hairs and you can you can do it by yourself like action experience and reflection and uh, believe, believe me that, that these two um, that these two uh, tools is always help me to uh, get a positive. Uh, result and i just uh, i just learned it from the fellowship program and the fellowship program was was uh, the fantastic uh, program to to make a baseline for me uh, towards the leadership so the next slide So here is the result after the challenges. Um, after so much advocacy, supervising and mentoring, after a, a good communication, and uh, uh, here is the uh, results uh, from the midwives. So midwives have become more aware about their scope of practice. Like there was always a low voice to give their opinion in the workplace because uh, because the supervisor is cannot be always in the hospital or to to be their uh, voice uh, because uh, um, they are uh, providing. Uh, services, uh, media free services 24 by 7 by themselves. So uh, is there any challenges or is there any topics that um, where they need to raise their voice? Media uh, always have to work individually and have to become a individual leader in their workplace. So now they are more aware about their um, scope, of, scope of practice and about their leadership also. And midwives are feeling confident in making deci uh, decision, and uh, they are enjoying improvement about their communication with the community and also with the team. And uh, uh, now uh, midwives are uh, more uh, tuned about ev evidence-based practice as they are introducing themselves as a young mid uh, as a young midwife of Bangladesh to the various guidelines of clinical gu guidelines like uh, the WHO guidelines, uh, some 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 uh, some national guidelines. They are giving more time toward the quality services and maintaining the international confederation mid, uh, confederation of midwives international standard midwife competencies and the hospital the main um, result is the hospital now has a fully separate maternity ward we have of the observation ward we have the postnatal ward the prenatal ward and the well equipped delivery room with high quality matern maternity care and there is so much space to make the women exercise to make the women uh, hydrate so um, so, so the midwives are providing uh, quality services the, and the in instructor is really very important towards the quality services we cannot provide a service just in a one room and uh, that will not uh, satis um, satisfy the women and their family and now we have a fully um, quali qualified and uh, um, completed team with two gynecologists two anesthesiologists and uh, and we have uh, access 24 by 7 cesarean section also 
So midwives are respected by other healthcare professionals and uh, managers. They are going toward the uh, within a good teamwork. And uh, um, um, and as I already talked about the quality service about the teamwork, and uh, you can see the Bhashanchor is holding zero maternal death record right now. And uh, day by day, we um, the midwives are developing their, themselves, and the ninety percent normal vaginal delivery are um, are uh, um, doing by the midwives in our facilities. So the next slide. Yeah. So uh, moving forward, there are still some issues and challenges and we are moving forward to ad by addressing them. And there are always the first one is ATER support. Like before, we didn't have at least uh, one cleaner in the night shift in our maternity uh, room. And now um, now we, ha we are getting some staff more like cleaner at night, but there are still some ATER gaps to uh, provide quality services. And we have a, a planning include further enhance, enhancement to the physical environment. And we are thinking to utilize the Bangladesh Media Free Society's Media Free Audit Tool to um, assess uh, the like what was the before and what, uh, what we have now. So audit, I think it's, uh, it's important to do in every facilities to uh, assess the quality, to assess the situation of the facility. And uh, our advocacy is always uh, um, uh, uh, focusing on securing full blood transfusion services on Bhashanchal. As uh, recently, we don't have a correct planning toward uh, uh, blood transfusion as we are uh, providing service in a simum facility that is comprehensive obstetric care. And, and I think uh, um, here we need to go forward for the blood transfusion as we don't have time to move from the Bhashanjo to the main island. So we need to manage any complicated case in our workplace in the, in the Bhashanjo area to save every life. And the, the professional development for midwives remains a priority, is, is the main priority of us because the midwives are providing midwife services. So there, uh, there should be a always continuing development of midwives. And we are always committed and moving forward to promote awareness among midwives regarding their involvement with the Bangladesh Midwifery Society uh, uh, as this is their professional association. Because without a professional association, I think the future of midwifery is, uh, uh, will be not sustainable. So I think every uh, midwife should be engaged with their association in their individual country. And we are promoting the um, uh, Bangladesh Midwifery Society to every midwife uh, to become a member of Bangladesh Midwifery Society. So the next slide. I think there is no next slide. So thank you so much uh, for your valuable time. Uh, if you need any information about uh, a midwifery context or any services that are happening in midwives, you can you can communicate so we can link you with the with the right person. So thank you so much for a valuable time and also thank you the VIDM team for the excellent uh, program that um, we, that you are holding. Thank you so much.